This video continues on from my first one that I did on two gang switches. So we have a two gang switch here. And we produced this wiring diagram, which was say a light here simulated in a kitchen and one in the dining area of the kitchen independently switched from here for the kitchen light and here for the dining area light from a two gang switch. We looked at the back of a two gang switch and we said that all the switches on a two, a three and a four gang were two way switches. So we had common L1 and L2 and that's what we drew down here. I said it would be a simple process also to convert one of the switches or both, I'm gonna do one in this, to two way. So this is the kitchen light and switch and this is the light in the dining area and switch. So let's say we wanted to make this one two way. We can already see that the switch on the wall, even though we're using it in here as a one way, can be converted to a two way without ever replacing the switch itself. So we just gotta alter the wiring within the switch and add a new cable across to our other switch, which will be a two-way switch. So we're gonna have a two-way switch with a common L1 and L2, this time a one-gang version somewhere else in the area. So this becomes a two-way switch, it already is, is part of our two-gang switch, and we add in another switch, which is two-way, and we couple it together by wiring it through using a three-core and CPC, or three-core and earth cable. And we've got our colors which we're really familiar with in this series of videos, where we've got brown, black, gray, and a bare conductor, which will be over-sleeved with green and yellow sleeving in order to identify it as a circuit protective conductor. And as we're gonna be using this three core to interconnect two switches, we know that the black and the gray will be switching line conductors. And also during the, the presentation, we need to identify them with brown sleeving to identify them as switching line conductors. The notes for these are available in a downloadable link. So if you look in the link in the description, you'll have access to this booklet here. I will alter and change the diagrams that we use within it as we go along. And this one probably isn't in there. This one here is, but adding this additional sheet here, which I'm going to do in a minute, like so, in order that we can change the wiring here. So we're gonna to need to move these cables out of these positions into new positions. Well, the easiest way for me to do it is just to bring a little piece of paper in and therefore we can reconnect the two conductors coming down from the light switch being our line and switching line and obviously re-divert our CPC as well. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna stick this in place. We're gonna convert this one here. The dining area light is now gonna be made two-way. We do nothing with the switch, apart from the fact I need to change its connections and we're gonna add in another switch here which is two-way. So let's bring it in and position it so we can just alter this drawer and put a little bit of glue on the back to hold it in position for me. So that's it there. So all I've done is kept the two gang switch. And for me, it's a case of just removing those conductors. Well, let's put the, the ones in that would already be there. So the CPC from the light in the kitchen came round into there. Strike that with a little bit of yellow. And we had the CPC coming down from our twin and CPC cable, which was already there. And now we've got these conductors here, which were permanent line from the loop coming down and the switching line coming back identified with brown sleeving, which we use the blue. You could have used twin brown. So we've got to position these two conductors now inside of our two gang switch in a different place. We had them in common at L1. We're now gonna move these two cables and we're gonna put them in L1 and L2. And it doesn't matter which way around they go. So as we look at this, I could have the L1 and L2 either way around, but I'm gonna bring them down logically. So I'm gonna bring the blue one down into here and the brown one down into here, leaving no connection now in the common. So in real terms, you'd taken the common connection out and moved it into either L1 or L2. By sticking a piece of paper on, that's what we've done. So let's bring down our switching line. Our blue conductor now comes down to here and we're gonna put a little bit of brown sleeving on it. And we'll bring our brown, which has just been really re-diverted out of common, into L1 or L2. All we need to do now, and we've seen it in other video presentations on both the two plate and three plate, which I recommend you go back and look at if you're starting at this point, you need to, a little bit of knowledge of what we've done to get to here. So all we're gonna do now is, this is exactly the same, so no cable changes other than a move of a cable within the switch. So nothing's happened here. All you're gonna do is from this position here, the two gang switch, introduce a three core to the area in which you want the other switch. And then you're gonna chop a box in the wall and insert 
are two-way um, switch. So you'd end up chopping a box into the wall and you'd put your two-way switch in. It's one gang, one switch on the front, two-way. So this three core here would go through the fabric of the building, maybe chased within it, run under floors, in roof spaces or wherever it's gonna take its route. But from us, we're just interested in the connections in the two gang switch and the connections in the new two way switch in order to control this lighting point here from two positions. Hopefully we remember from other presentations that I always use black as common on site. They often don't, sometimes they use brown, but I always use black as common. And I've got my two strappers here, which are L1 and L2. And again, it doesn't matter which way around they go, but generally I tend to bring the brown of the three core out of the brown, which went up to the light black in common and gray in the other connection, CPC comes across. So let's add that three core cable in. So I'll just simply bring the CPC its easiest route across. Remember, you'll be using a ruler for this. So that's my CPC and my cable brought across. And let's go with black for the common. Try and make it a little bit neat, it is difficult. So bring the black across. So that goes across there. Remembering we must put brown sleeving on it on both ends. So we're identifying our conductor here, which is black with brown oversleeving to identify it as a switching line conductor, something we're very used to doing. So that's my blacks linked together in my common. I'm gonna bring my brown of my three core across. So I'm gonna bring that one out and I'm gonna bring my gray of my three core out as well. And let's bring those into the next switch again. It doesn't matter which ones they go in, so it's easier for my drawing to go this way around and that's my three core in but remember the gray will need brown sleeving on both ends to identify it as a switching line conductor so we've done then so we had our original two gang switch and we know the two gang switch they're both two-way switches on the back so we did nothing other than remove the connection from the common which was brown and put it into either l1 or l2 so this cable here just got re-diverted from our original. Check back if you're not sure what I'm talking about. And then we introduced a three core across to our new switching position here, which gave us a two-way switch. We had the black as common, and it didn't matter which way around, L1 and L2 went for the gray and the brown, and introduced that two-way switch at a new position. So now when we look at our diagram, our wiring diagram, our original two gang switch here, Still this switch operates the switch in the kitchen. Still this one operates the one in the dining room, but we now can also operate the dining room from another position. So that gives us two way switching of this light fit in here. We could have done the same. We could have come out of this one to another area. Of course, the drawing starts to get a little bit crowded, but we could have brought a two way switch across to here and we could have made both of them two way just by simply taking out the connection in the common and putting it either L1 or L2 and introducing the three core as if we'd just done there. So hopefully that's just started the process of extending this through. In the next video, we'll look at a scenario where the light downstairs and the light upstairs are from a two gang switch, something very common as you come in the front door, normally there's one for the ground floor light and one for the light on the landing, but they're often from two different circuits. So the downstairs lighting circuit is separate from the upstairs lighting circuit, and we'll show the cables coming in differently and what it means in the switch when you have the downstairs and upstairs lights off different circuits with the cables within a two gang switch. So we'll, we'll investigate that and then we'll look at some solutions that we can come up with um, in order to change that process. And we'll go on and we'll two way, we'll perhaps make these down lights, we'll use the two plate method to show a two gang switch as well. So this series will continue on looking at other ways in which we can use two gang switches, both with the three plate and two plate method. Remembering we use the three plate light in wiring method for this one. And we've extended our circuit from being a simple uh, two gang switch with them both being one way. And we've converted one of them now to be two way operated. And as always, I hope this video has been some help.